continuing to iterate and and um, uh, you know repurpose our content to better optimize for uh, getting featured. And I think uh, you know we weren't necessarily ranking for many new net, ter net new terms. Uh, it was more so just getting a significantly higher proportion of clicks uh, by being in the featured snippet slot and then also being somewhere on page one. All right, so I'll hand it back to Lauren and for the, the Q&A. Excellent, thank you so much, Zach. Uh, it's really good stuff. I uh, have a lot of questions that have come in, so I'll go through them really quickly. I think that, um, you know, I know that one of the questions that I get a lot of the time is that, uh, it's just basically, how do I, how do I rank myself for feature snippets? And a lot of the time, that comes from sites that aren't ranking well in SEO to begin with. And yeah. one thing, I mean, my opinion is there's this like myth of rank zero out there that by achieving the featured snippet and achieving rank zero, you can jump ahead of everything else. So for a site that's not necessarily ranking in the top 10 yet, um, you know, how, what would your recommendations be on how to get started um should they start writing with feature snippets in mind right now or focus on fundamental seo first or do a little bit of both yeah i would say the latter do a little bit of both um so you're right it, it is a myth that you know um if your website doesn't rank right now for anything you're just going to be position zero uh and leapfrog all your competitors but kind of in that same token um you know, it, it does represent an opportunity to leapfrog your competitors. So let's say if you're already on page one, you're, let's say, position eight, um, hey, you have a chance of, of, you know, leapfrogging every other spot on page one uh, if there's an opportunity. And let's say the, the people ahead of you have not optimized their content. Um, and, you know, you create your content in such a, such a way that it, it's really easy for Google to pull uh, their featured snippet. So, um, yeah, my advice is if, if you're not even on page one for the terms that you want to get to, you have to work on that first. Um, so, you know, back to basics, um, uh, you know, developing your, your, your link profile so Google thinks you're more important, um, you know, continue to write content um, and, you know, make sure your website from a technical perspective is, is performing the way it should uh, compared to your, your competitors. Uh, and really, you know, feature snippets will play a role uh, once you can start getting onto page one for the terms that you'd like. That being said, I would still write content uh, for featured snippets um, from the beginning. Why wouldn't you? Uh, because you, you'll never know what types of terms that you'll rank for outside of the ones that are directly visible to you um, that, yeah. you know, you could get uh, featured in. Yeah, and I think we talked about this a little bit at SCJ Summit in Chicago, but one thing, I mean, one reasoning for this besides answering voice search and things like that is that I, I think across the industry it's kind of turned people away from from writing for keywords into writing for conversation so when you look at SEM rush and you see your feature snippet tracking you typically do see that there are batches of phrases that are similar that you start to rank for for specific posts and it's not only keyword based it's phrases that are more concept based. So you might not be ranking, you might see social media management app in there, but you might see something like, you know, what's the best platform for managing my social media? And a lot of the times, um, I guess traditionally in SEO before a timeline, actually one of my favorite slides was that timeline, looking at Hummingbird and Allo and everything else, because it did show the build up to this. And pre all of that, things, I mean, things still are very keyword oriented, uh, but it does change the mindset from a quote unquote writing for SEO basis to be more holistic Q and A oriented. You know, I, I, I think I've heard the tool answer the public mentioned a million times in the past year because of that. Um, so uh, it's very interesting. Um, so question, does Google give preference in displaying featured snippets of local businesses? So I guess that means, this is from Samantha, 
that if I'm searching in Chicago for a term and if I'm searching in Miami for a term, do I see sometimes local snippets in those areas or are you typically seeing uh, global feature snippets? Uh, I think it depends on um, the context of the query. So if, if the query is localized, then potentially yeah, you'll maybe have a higher chance of a local business um, that has local kind of or localized content perform better. Um, but yeah, generally, uh, you know, local SEO is kind of a different bag uh, altogether. Here's but, an interesting kind of, question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just kind of on your last um, your last note. I mean, there was a slide at the SEJ Summit that kind of talked about um, how we did when we lose a spot uh, in, in, in a, a featured snippet. Um, so kind of, I guess, relates to your point on um, not really optimizing for keywords, but optimizing for topics in general. Um, so it's, it, although as great as it is to, um, let's say, rank for a new topic and all kinds of related terms that roll up to that, um, and generally we'll find that we'll, we'll get featured in all of those related terms, the same thing happens when we get edged out. So, um, you know, in one particular case, there was one target term where we lost our featured snippet spot to a competitor, and overnight we lost 22% of our organic prospect interest for that particular post, and the numbers were really, really big. So uh, as much as it can help you, it can hurt you, um, and uh, if you get too used to the success, I guess, of, of uh, featured snippets. But yeah, definitely optimize for topics, uh, not so much for keywords, uh, and that's one way that um, we'll actually create content at the blog at, at Hootsuite. So, uh, we might start off with a target keyword that we really want to rank for, uh, but we'll have to kind of do additional research to say, okay, well, hey, this is what the user is actually searching for. Um, what are all the other kind of topics that will kind of, um, I guess, roll up and create a holistic answer to what we're really trying to figure out? Uh, and that, yeah, that we'll, we'll kind of structure all those sub questions. If you kind of read our blog after this, um, you might start to kind of see through that. Uh, and how we've integrated our optimization techniques for featured snippets into our blog content. So kudos to the blog team at Hootsuite anyways for um, working that into the regular process now. I don't even have to really review it anymore. Fantastic. That's always a good sign. So I'll definitely read the blog after this and we'll drop a link to yep. the blog. Uh, oh, I'm sure you guys do it too, well. Lauren. Yes, <laughs> we do. So um, yep. next question, is it worth trying for a featured snippet if the featured snippet that's currently being shown is of a site like Wikipedia or Mayo Clinic? Uh, uh, I mean, that's a good question. Um, and I think the answers you're going to get are kind of, you know, subjective and based on people's opinion. Um, I would look at I would ask I would ask myself some hard questions if that if my core competitor was let's say WebMD or yeah Wikipedia or something along those lines actually Wikipedia is a competitor of Hootsuite technically from an organic perspective but um, I would try to ask myself hey you know what is is WebMD or is this huge giant answering the question uh, effectively and could I do it better and you have to be truthful to yourself in the sense that if they are doing a good job. Well, chances are they're also, they have a way, way higher level of domain authority than you do or trust with Google. Uh, so maybe the future might not look so bright if that's who's currently in the featured snippet spot. Um, if you kind of perform the search for the target keyword and, um, you know, maybe it is one of those big players, but maybe they're not answering the question succinctly or uh, they're not optimized like that Mashable example that I, uh, that I illustrated, um, then yeah, most definitely you can, you, can, uh, you can beat them. Great. Uh, next question um, from Olga. How important is structured content with, uh, in terms of header one, header two, bullet points, et cetera, with setting up a post to get picked up from a feature snippet perspective? Yeah, I would say it's, well, again, I'd say there's two sides to it. I would say it is important. I, I mean, if I had the choice, I would um, uh, structure content assets to kind of play to what Google's looking for. Uh, but like the example I gave with uh, unordered lists, you know, for our blog specifically, we found many instances where 
we're not really optimized. Um, let's say we don't have a, a, a list created, but Google will just create their own list uh, by collecting all the different H2s on the page and you know ordering them into a, a nicely formed list. And then there's been other examples where we've actually gone through the trouble of saying, okay, well we're going to make a, a list specifically for Google. Uh, they you know haven't changed their feature snippet results. So um, so yeah, I, I would say you should do it anyways, but just understand that um, uh, as long as, I guess, there's a, a baseline of how your content's structured uh, in the sense that it has headlines, um, then yeah, they're pretty, they're smart enough usually to pick up um, the, 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 the meaning uh, of, of your content. Um, next question, uh, how do backlinks influence obtaining feature snippet position? And does the anchor text of the backlinks typically make a difference to a post that's you're trying yeah, to get so, featured? Good point. Uh, I would say they're indirectly related in the sense that if you don't have any links, then it's unlikely you're not going to be like, it's unlikely you'll get onto page one in the first place for any type of competitive term. Um, so all the normal ranking factors that, you know, SEJ typically writes about for, uh, you know, how to, you know, backlinks and anchor text and all those things, I would say apply uh, to, to get there in the first place. Once you're on page one, I, you know, I would maybe say that it's, it's you know, Google maybe cares more about the, the way the content is presented uh, and the engagement metrics um, that, that searchers uh, demonstrate when, uh, when they're presented with the 10 different results. Here's an interesting question. So first of all, do you use AI bots or content spinners to produce questions to answers? And if AI bots were used to write content, couldn't Google just use that content as a featured snippet and link back to your site? So besides the question, first of all, do you think Google prefers um, human written content like natural language content as opposed to uh, someone possibly using an AI bot or whatever to produce content on their site? Yeah, good uh, um, good question. So, uh, so to answer the first part of the question, Hootsuite does not currently use um, artificial intelligence bots to kind of, you know, create uh, question and answer type content. So it's all, there's actually a team uh, in this very building behind me uh, that, you know, uh, constantly are creating content, uh, homegrown content on our own. Um, yeah, I mean, sure. Uh, if if you know the competition is weak, uh, I'm sure Google could you know pick out um, Q and A type stuff uh, and present it in, in a featured snippet sense. However, if it's a con if you know the context of of the content that's being created is standard industry fact. Uh, then there's an interesting distinction that you guys should be aware of in the sense that um, Google won't give any credit if they believe that it's a fact that everybody else already talks about. So if you said something like, you know, how old is, um, you know, Donald Trump or something like that, you might see an answer, but no credit given to any particular website. So, um, yeah, just something to kind of keep in mind. But yeah, so Hootsuite doesn't use AI bots um, and yeah, they, they theoretically could, could work, I'm sure, if you're answering kind of, you know, unique questions that maybe a lot of other people haven't already answered. Yeah, interesting. I'm not sure where that question came from, but um, I know that Google did recently commission uh, use of bots for some, I, I think, believe some of, the, some of the newspaper industry, probably to do a compare and contrast. Um, so maybe it came from that. But uh, it's a very good point on um, common known facts uh, because I remember when Rich Nippets came out and even, yeah, so there were a lot of people that were fairly upset because say like horoscope sites or numerology sites or how old is this person? And and recently also, um, uh, what is it? The... Uh, the, uh, how much does this person make or whatever. So that, if that's all public accessible information, Google just takes that from the same database that 
the content creators for those industries are taking it from and presenting it there with no with no source right so it seems that uh, there was a little bit of a backlash because there was a drop in traffic because if you're searching on your phone how old is the president there's no reason to scroll down to some how old is this person.com slash president slash you know whatever and click on that site get bombarded with advertisements uh, find out your information click the back button like Google does it for you um, when they started rolling out feature snippets that weren't necessarily uh, search query related doing things like um, I remember the first year that uh, they rolled out their March Madness um, tournament bracket in the results and not everyone was upset because a lot of the tournament bracket would link to uh, sources from like CBS Sports or ESPN or things like that for information. Um, then the next year, uh, the tournament bracket linked to Google-owned YouTube video in association with, I guess, CBS slash March Madness. Uh, so that extra traffic was taken away from uh, the other third parties that were utilized in the bracket itself. But um, that was a great example of not only Google taking that publicly accessible information and serving it above the results, but also pushing down the results so far that most people did not want to scroll down to the pages that were underneath of it. Um, yeah. So essentially almost killing an industry. Um, yeah. But just to kind of add, uh, add on top of that, um, when you know, you're creating content that you want to get featured, uh, one kind of important thing I guess we didn't really talk about uh, was, you know, you sort of don't want to, you know, holistically answer a user's question uh, within the featured snippet uh, portion, uh, because essentially then they'll have no, per no reason to actually click on your results and actually go into your website. Uh, so um, although you want to uh, answer, you know, user's queries within the featured snippet to a degree, you want to leave enough out there um, to compel them to actually click your results. So uh, just be cognizant of that uh, as well. Very true, very true. So uh, the next question uh, is pretty interesting from Omar. Uh, Omar is an SEO for a newspaper, <clears throat> and they do have a, a lot of high local authority. Um, they rank very well, uh, even in the first position for a lot of the terms uh, that they target or that they've written about in the past. But Good they're job, not necessarily Omar. getting, yes, exactly. But they're not necessarily getting featured snippets. Um, where would you suggest that Omar starts to start optimizing for featured snippets? Well, I would kind of first um, ask, <clears throat> you know, what, who is getting featured for the snippets? And do the, do the snippets even exist uh, for the search terms that, you know, you're, you're looking at? I would, let's just assume, I guess, that yes, um, there are featured snippets. Uh, and maybe their competitors. Uh, so, so if you're ranking in position one, then uh, you know you have the best opportunity to, to actually get featured. And so if someone that's in position two or position three is, then it's really yours to lose. Um, so I would uh, I would you know t maybe take a hard look at you know how maybe their content is structured versus yours. Um, is the is the question and answer higher up on your competitors' pages than maybe yours are? I mean, is yours buried, you know, three pages down um, or, or scroll lengths down uh, versus your competitor having it near the top of the page? Um, you know, depending on the type of featured snippet, is, is your competitor uh, have their content structured in a way that's really easy for Google to sort of take and um, kind of replicate or, or, or put into a featured snippet versus yours? Um, so, you know, hard to answer that question without specifically seeing the, the instances, but um, Omar sounds like a smart guy, uh, and uh, I'm sure he'll, you know, he'll figure it out and defeat his competitors. Excellent. So, uh, last page, um, could you just, or sorry, last question. Uh, could you discuss a little bit about featured snippet opportunities for product pages or transactional pages? And should SEOs for product slash e-commerce focus on uh, featured snippet style shortcuts for those pages or should they more so focus on uh, building out featured snippets for 
the, uh, the content, um, maybe on a blog or publishing site, which then leads the traffic to the transactional page. Yeah, um, I just my own personal opinion, I think there's maybe less opportunities for feature snippets within transactional type search queries. Um, I maybe would, if, I mean, if I was in, in uh, your shoes and uh, I was, you know, optimizing for exclusively or, or the majority of my terms were transactional, maybe I would look into uh, microdata or, or how can I enrich my uh, product pages or something along those lines to maybe get some additional visibility in that sense. Uh, but generally, you know, for transactional type queries, that's where Google puts lots of the ads. So Google shopping ads and things like that sort of take precedence over featured snippets. Um, so, yeah, maybe not a great answer, but honest. Yeah, I think that they've uh, definitely gone down the road of having most product or e-commerce oriented uh, queries served through Google Shopping and um, other forms of Google advertising. So there might be more opportunity there with um, producing great content either on their store blog or on a uh, sister or connected informational site and then driving that traffic over the product. So Zach, thank you very much. Really appreciate the time that you took today to share with our audience your experiences over at Hootsuite and um, specifically the, the results, right? It's, it's, it's great to see tangible metrics uh, behind these types of uh, projects. So thanks again, really appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks to everybody who attended. Uh, and thanks uh, to SEJ for having me. Um, so yeah, I wish you guys all the best and uh, let's you know keep optimizing and uh, making the world a better place through SEO. So uh, thanks, guys. Absolutely. And just to remind everyone, we'll be sending out the video of the Q&A session after um, we process everything on the video side. It will also be available on our YouTube channel. And all of Zach's slides will be available as well. Thanks again, Zach. Uh, thanks, everyone. And see yeah. you on the next Marketing Think Tank.